we've been talking about your, your health history with the rashes is that recently the other day uh, you'd come back with a salad from a raw food restaurant here on the island mm -hmm. and you're like I feel kind of funny and we noticed that you started getting a rash right after you had the salad from a raw food restaurant mm -hmm. and I, I, I want to talk about this because this this is an issue that a lot of times people think because it's so called raw it's healthy yes and a lot of people go to a lot of raw food restaurants and they trust the raw food restaurants to have investigated all the ingredients they're using to prepare the food yeah and they think that you know every the raw restaurants are looking out for everyone's best interests yeah. And why is it people feel sick or they have allergic reactions after going to a raw food restaurant or using a raw food ingredient? Yeah. What, what's going on with that? I feel like we should like pixel out my face in this part. <laughs> <laughs> and only use my voice. <laughs> because I really get in trouble in okay. the raw food world. Yeah. Um, because I talk about this mm. a lot. And a lot of the restaurants and the detox centers, they don't like me. <laughs> Um, because I'm trying to get this information out to people and they just want to sell their raw food. And I think that we need the, the knowledge to make the best choice for ourselves. Um, and if, if we're all open to that, then we can create the most beautiful raw food restaurants with no additives. Mm -hmm. The problem is, um, the, the danger in raw food restaurants that I've seen is in the sauces, it's in the misos, it's in the wasabi, which sometimes they use like a squeeze tube of wasabi. Um, it can be in the seaweed, especially if they come from Asia. So it can be in your nori wrap, that seaweed. Um, it, they often have MSG and the flavor enhancers that I'm intolerant to, the, hence the rash. So in that particular restaurant, they make a pesto salad dressing, which is supposed to just be basil, cashew nut, olive oil, uh, apple cider vinegar, but they add, I, I think, they add a sea, um, mushroom flavored soy sauce mm. to make it a little bit more salty. And if you, if you taste that pesto, it's too salty. It's not a normal salt flavor, and especially when you are into raw food, of course, your palate is cleaner, so you can taste that um, real saltiness. It's, it's a warning sign that it's not all natural. I've been in other raw food restaurants where I've seen them. You know, there was uh, there was one raw food restaurant that had a raw um, a raw Asian rice dish. Mm. And, you know, the, it was all little chopped bits of carrot and chopped cabbage, very small. And I went in and I said, "Let me, can I see?" I said, "What do you make the sauce with?" And the guys in the restaurant came out and pulled out a big bottle of soy sauce, and right on the back in English it said monosodium glutamate. Oh no. I mean, and this is this is my world. Yeah. So I I'm the sleuther. Mm. <laughs> I'm the sleuther, and you know I go into these restaurants, and I can I can find it immediately because mm. I can look at the menu, I can see what's going to be salty, and I, and then I ask them, what are you using for this? And you know those tubes of wasabi are dangerous. They often have flavor enhancers in them as well. Even the unpasteurized raw miso. I have found will make me react okay. and that's the only thing that makes me react mm. are these chemical additives. So so and and most soy sauces even if they're or miso or whatever even if they're so called organic they still have these oh, sure. flavor enhancers. Organic doesn't mean that it does they don't add chemicals to it after they've picked it organically. Okay. <laughs> so this is the other thing and it's one of the reasons why I started a whole module here on Samui where I teach the truth in food labeling. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just that. I mean, you know, this word fortified, I love that word. That just means we've artificially injected something <laughs> in it because it has nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but these are things I try to teach people because if you have just a little bit of knowledge, you can make such better choices for yourself. So let's say you're not in 100% raw, even if you're buying transitional um, sauces or salad dressings to help get you through until you can make your own salad dressings, there are better choices you can make. Um, of course, I would teach you how to make your own salad dressing mm. because I think they taste better. Um, but it is about trying to get out of those chemicals. That's the real danger. And the other danger is when you are 100% raw, you're a lot more sensitive to those chemicals. 
So you might get a screeching migraine headache if you eat a little bit of MSG. Mm. Um, that the cleaner you are, the more you're going to react. Yeah. And I've seen that in raw foodists too. And they go, "Why do I have a headache?" And I say, "Well, tell me what you've eaten the last two two days. I'll find it for you." Mm. <laughs> so I want to actually move into the iridology. Okay. Okay, because we're we're coming to the end, and I find this really fascinating. So mm -hmm. if you can just briefly explain what it is and why why would someone consult an iridologist? The iridology is really a powerful tool, it's an assessment tool and it is a science so when we say iridology it's the science of the iris of the eye. Irid is the plural of iris so it's the science of the irises of the eye and um, it works because the brain remembers everything. Mm. <laughs> Even if you don't want to remember, your brain remembers everything that's happened to your physical body in your whole life. And it also has an imprint of your inherent information as well. The eye reveals this through the optic nerve, which is connected to the brain and the central nervous system. So, of course, the central nervous system is your information gatherer around the body. So, with all that information is always going back up to the brain, so the brain knows what's going on everywhere. And the iris is a reflection of that information. Your iris will change. It can change for the better. A lot of raw foodists, when they get into raw food, their eyes get brighter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they go from a hazel to a green color during the process of detoxification. Um, if people get sicker, their eyes will get muddier. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's from a layman perspective. But that's what people notice when, you're, when you are sick, is that your eyes are muddy. Um, and so it is, it is an interesting tool to use for life because your iris will change. Um, but basically when I do a reading, I'm looking for areas, uh, especially with my clients, I look at the elimination organs. So I want to see how is their body able to detoxify. So I look at the kidneys, the lungs, the liver, the colon, and the skin. That's very important. Sometimes one of your detoxification organs is weak, mm. and then the other four have to automatically do more work. So that puts stress somewhere in that system. Now many times that stress will be your symptom, mm. but it's not the cause. The cause will be this one okay. over here. Um, and a lot of times people when they get symptoms, they go to the symptom highway. Mm. And they go to the symptom specialist. <laughs> and they tell everybody about their symptom. Um, and then they come to me and they even present their symptom to me and when they first sit down and I look in the eye and I say, well that's very nice, thank you very much, but your problem is actually over here. Mm. <laughs> and when you fix this, the symptom will go away. So that's a real interesting um, part of iridology is taking into account that, you know, when you have something happening in one part of the body, it will always affect every other part of the body. Mm. Um, the other things that I identify are things like um, absorption, if your body is able to absorb. I can see if you have mineral deficiency, not always exactly what mineral, but sometimes yes. If you have um, any type of um, bowel disorder or dysfunction, there will be something coming up in the eye to show that. Um, looking at your lymphatic system, your blood system, your brain function, um, if there's stress that affects the physical body, we can also see that. And usually when I do a reading, I piece that all together mm. for my client just to give them a very, very good understanding of what's happening inside. And many times when you have that understanding, it empowers you to make decisions for yourself. Mm. So ultimately the decision is always yours, but hopefully you'll make a more conscious and wise decision for your health when you understand, wow, if I don't do that, maybe what could happen to me in 10 years is something like this. I don't want to go over there, so I'll take care of it now. So, I want to close because I, I thank you so much for your time. And thank if you. someone were wanting to contact you, how would they get in touch with you? Um, so my website is healthybliss.net. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. My Twitter name is Raw Food Bliss. My YouTube channel, I have my own sleuthing and supermarkets and all the crazy things I do. My YouTube channel is Find Your Healthy Bliss. Um, and you can contact me directly through my website if you want to get in touch with me. Um, and certainly, if you ever do come to Koh Samui, Thailand, please let me know because I would love to invite all of you to my green smoothie classes, my raw food cooking classes, my motivational classes, and I would love to just have you over for a coconut. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.